continuing on with preliminaries in R, now let's talk some about R objects and assignment of object names to those objects. So in the last part, we talked about functions, and those are things that R can do. Objects are things that exist in R. So function calls will usually produce an object. If you just call the object, the function like we've been doing in the last set of slides though, and don't assign it a name, then R will print it out, but it won't save it anywhere for you to use later. Um, a lot of times that's not the behavior that we want. It would be a pain to have to put in that function call every time we need R to, to rerun the, that analysis. Instead, it's really helpful to have a kind of shorthand that we can refer back to that object later. And so we can use it and build on the idea. So we can do that, and, and to do that, we do what's called assigning it a name. And this is its own type of expression in R, and it's called an assignment expression. So uh, this is one of those that uses more of an operator. It uses an operator called the gets arrow. And so this looks kind of like a, an arrow pointing to the left right here. It's a less than sign and then a hyphen. It will take anything that you have created on the right hand side of that arrow and it will assign it the name that you put on the left hand side. So here I've just kind of set up the generic code for it, but you can see that we'll have some function call or other expression over here on the right. And then the gets arrow will take the output of that and instead of printing it out, it'll save it in whatever name we've put on the left. As one note, it's really important when you do this assignment arrow not to include a space between the, the less than and the hyphen symbols. All right, so here's an example. Before, um, we were looking at Hello World, so we could type Hello World, and R will just print it back to you. But it doesn't save it anywhere for you to use it later. If you want to use it later, you need to assign it a name. So here, I've taken this object, Hello World. It's just a character string with those characters in it. And then with the gets arrow, I'm assigning it. And in this case, I've chosen the word message, the, the object name message. Later, if we want to use other function calls, we can refer back to this with this shorthand name. So before we were doing print x equals hello world in quotation marks, now we can refer back to message, the name of this object that we created. What R will do then is it will look back and see what object it has defined as message, It'll see that that's defined as this object, and it'll run as if we had put hello world in there. So just as a note, I know it can seem a little bit obscure to have to type this arrow with two different symbols, but uh, the reason for it goes way back to when S, the precursor to R, was being created back in the age when you would have a mainframe computer and then just terminals away from it where you would sit and type. And some of the keyboards for those had um, an arrow as one of the keys. You can kind of see it here, it's a little bit small, but over the O on this particular key. So it was easier in the past. Um, if you want to have something easier now, R has some nice keyboard shortcuts. And so if you go into tools and the help, you can see what those are for your computer. For my computer, let's see, it's down right here, insert assignment operator. So for me, I could do it with option and then a hyphen. And you can look in that same space to see what the shortcut is for your computer if you feel like it's taking you too long to type two separate characters. So once you've done that assignment expression, it can be a little bit unsettling because it looks like R hasn't done anything. So let's do an example. Uh, if you remember before, if we just put in hello, world, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to print it out immediately, but, but it feels like R has talked back to you. If you assign it, and then press enter, nothing happens. You get back your carrot, so R is ready to talk again, but um, it doesn't, it's not immediately clear that, that you did something with that assignment error. So let's talk about a few ways that you can check to make sure it really went through. One way is once you have assigned an object a name, you should be able to type that object name and press enter, and it should tell you what's stored in the object with that name. And you can see this works. Here we have hello world. Another way that we can do it is with the ls function. 
this is one of those functions that doesn't need any arguments inside it. Um, it will print out all of the, the object names that we have defined in the current session of R. And you can see right now we just have message in this one, but it, it did get assigned. And then the last place you can look up here, one of the RStudio panes is called environment. And it has the different um, objects that we have assigned to a name where it will put the object name here and then it'll put the first few values in that object name over on the right. So this is a quick place where you can see everything that you have defined at the moment. All right, so these are going through the examples that, that we just had for that and how you can find the message. There are a few rules that you have to follow when you are assigning uh, the, these object names. So first of all, you can only use object names that have letters, numbers, or the underscore character. You can't put any other special character in. And the other rule is that you can't start with anything but a letter. So these would all give you errors, all of these assignments. So here I'm taking the same object, that hello world character string, and trying to assign it to an object name. This would cause a problem because it, it starts with a number. It doesn't have other special characters that we need, but it has it could have a one somewhere in it, but it can't start with a one. The same thing's going on here. This one starts with an underscore. And so um, that, that's breaking that rule that it has to start with a letter. And then this final one, the start of it looks fine, but then the exclamation point in it um, is a special character other than the underscore. So that's not gonna work. So those are the rules for picking good object names. There are also some guidelines for not just picking ones that won't break when you try to put them in R, but for picking ones that are actually good and, and will help you as you're coding. So uh, Hadley Wickham has a nice style guide for R where he's got some suggestions for a lot of things about R style, but also about um, this particular point of how you might wanna name your objects. So one is to use lowercase, all lowercase for your variable names. R is case sensitive. And so even though I've defined message, I used all lowercase uh, letters. So if I try to do with an uppercase, actually R Studio is being very clever and trying to fix that for me. But if I try to do it with an uppercase to start, then you can see it says that it didn't find that object. It can't recognize it because it sees something with all lowercase letters as being something different where, where one or more of the letters is in uppercase instead. By using all lowercase, you don't have to remember which of the letters you put in uppercase or not. It, it, it makes it much easier to remember because you can just remember they're all always in lowercase. The second, and this is related, is if you want to separate, if you want to be able to see kind of different words in your object name, you can do that using the underscore character rather than using a capital case. And, and there are some differences in coding style for this. This is called snake case because it all looks kind of, kind of long and curvy. Um, but in this case, you can see how that underscore is allowing you to separate the two names so you can visually see the two. Um, and then a contrast is using a capital letter to, to set off a new, a new name there. And um, this you can visually see as well, but again, it takes you back to that problem of having to remember which are uppercase and which are lowercase. And the final thing is to avoid using a name that's already defined in R. So if you know that there is a function mean, um, don't call one of your R objects mean because then you will have some code where later if you want to use the function, R is going to get confused and look at the object that you assigned and, and let that take pre precedence in terms of what it picks up when you reference that later.